Hi there, my name is Kelly Edwards and welcome to your yoga practice today. This class that I have for you is going to be a restorative or yin style yoga class. So this is all about relaxation, this is all about stretching and lengthening the body. And so we're going to be in poses and holding them for a few minutes at a time. Um, this yin restorative class is geared towards sleep. So if you've been suffering from insomnia or not sleeping well at night, um, if you've been feeling extra stressed or overwhelmed, these are going to be shapes that will help you to find balance and help you to find some good rest again. So the props that you will need, two blocks, and if you have a bolster or a sturdier pillow, then you can grab that. Otherwise, a couple pillows and blankets will work as well. Okay. So to begin, we're going to start in just an easy seated pose. If you want to use any of your props to sit yourself up to make yourself more comfortable, you can. Resting your hands somewhere in your lap. Let your shoulders relax away from your ears. Go ahead and close your eyes. And start to notice your breath as it moves in and out of your body. Just pay attention to the in and the out of the breath. Don't worry about making your breath anything that it isn't right now. So don't worry about breathing too deeply or making any sounds with the breath. Just enjoy your natural breath here. See if you can find a nice equal breath just by focusing on the rhythm. So can you feel as if you're breathing in the same amount of air that you're breathing out? And if by simply focusing on the rhythm, that's not enough for the mind, so if you're feeling a bit scattered, then you can begin to count your breath. So count the seconds of the inhalation, and then count the seconds of the exhalation. And if the breath does not match, then I want you to extend the breath to the longer number. So say you breathe in for four seconds, but you breathe out for six. The next breath you take in, try to get six seconds on the inhale and keep the six seconds on the exhale. And of course, this is a number that works for you. So don't strain the breath. If it's four or three seconds in and out, that's perfect. Just keep an equal breath in and out. Just a few more moments here, focusing on the breath. And if you feel ready to create your intention for practice, then you can set that now. Mm -hmm. 
go ahead and gently blink your eyes open if you want to roll your shoulders a few times or drop your chin and stretch out through the sides of the neck all right so we'll keep coming back to the breath or i'll keep calling your attention back to the breath as a way to create focus and stay very present as i We'll be honest, I think the hardest part of a restorative class or a yin class is just sitting there, <laughs> letting the time pass as we stretch. So coming back to the breath will help to focus the mind. All right, our first position that we're gonna take here to hold is gonna be a wide straddle. So you can open your legs out wide. I like to be sideways on my mat so that my heels get that little extra cushion. Now I'm not asking you to go into middle splits, <laughs> so just a nice gentle opening. As we sit here over time, we're going to be able to open the legs more and sink down into the forward fold more, so don't rush into it. Couple of options for your props here. <clears throat> if you would like, you can take your blocks and stack them on top of one another and then go into a forward fold, resting your forehead on the blocks. You can also put your blocks down medium height and take your bolster, pillows, or blankets, place it over the top, and then again, go into a forward fold here. Another option, kind of like the blocks, I'll show you from the side, if you go into that wide straddle, if you've got a bolster like this, you can set it on an angle and then again, resting your forehead so it's a, a softer surface than the blocks would be. Okay, so however you want to set yourself up, stay a bit sweeter in the intensity. Again, over time, you'll be able to get deeper into the poses. Okay, go ahead into your fold. The time is starting now. Just make sure as the heart drops down and forward that your knees and toes stay pointing up to the sky. So don't let the toes turn in as the heart drops. This will keep us in a nice uh, little external rotation in the hip. So all your job is in a yin class is to set yourself up in the shape and then try to soften and relax as much as possible. So see what you can let go of. And if it ever gets to be too much, just come back to your breath. Count the breath, make sure it's an equal in as out. So we are about halfway through our hold at this time. If you are feeling like there's enough work with where you at when with where you're at, then please stay. 
if you feel like you can move your blocks down a level, start to go into the forward fold some more, then you can adjust your props, adjust your position, and start to go deeper into it as long as your body allows. Okay, so yin is not about forcing, it's about softening and staying. Nice deep breath here. stretch of time here. Bring your attention back to your breath. Scan through the body and notice what you can let go of, what you can soften. About five more breaths here. See if you can count the remaining breaths. Stay present for them. and easy. Start to walk your hands back, sitting up tall through your torso. You can move your props out of the way for a moment. Help your knees bend. <laughs> Bring the feet back to center. Oh, that feels good to release. And then I like to rest back in my hands and just gently drop the knees from side to side. Okay. So we're now going to go into a half straddle. So we started wide, helping to open up the hips, the glutes, the lower back. Now doing it one side at a time, we're going to be able to go deeper into a forward fold and get more opening through the lower back and the back side. So a couple of options here for you with this one. Um, right leg is going to be extended out, so open wide in that half straddle. Left knee is going to be bent. The foot comes to the inner thigh. Now, if your hips are tight and this knee, left knee is lifted, I want you to take a pillow, block, blanket or something and support it. Put it underneath. Okay. If it's okay, then just make sure that you're kind of pressing that left knee down into the mat. Now, you can go into our forward fold once again, so you can have your blocks, bolster pillows out in front of you, and you can go forward. Or you can take your softer props, place them on your right leg, and then you'll take a slight twist. So we're rotating the spine a little bit, and then you can walk down the right leg folding this way. Now, this variation over the leg is opening up this lower left side of my back more so than if I was going forward. So if you feel like you want extra attention there, take this little twist fold. Okay, so you can go ahead and get set up into whatever position you want. With this one, I will let you know again when we're halfway through. So if you want to start with the fold over the leg, and then halfway through, you switch to the forward fold, you can do that as well, or vice versa. Start forward and then go over the leg. And again, we're only going as far as the body will allow us to. I'm not trying to pull, push, force into it. 
and it's a relaxation into the stretch which people always think is a little ironic they laugh at me when I say to relax into the stretch <laughs> but it really truly works and after a yin class the stretch will stay with you longer so you may notice that tomorrow or even the day after you're still feeling loose and flexible as long as we're being kind to ourselves in the present moment Definitely check in with the left hip and the left glute. Try to relax that space so we may be clenching the bottom a bit. Let that go. Keep focusing on your breath. halfway through our hold on this side if you're over the leg and you want to bring yourself center now or from center to the leg if you're moving just do so gently of course if there's enough work for you with where you are then stay Stretch of time here, nice deep breath, a little bit longer. Take five more breaths and see if you can again remain present for those five breaths. Sit yourself back up. If you end it over the leg, you're going to be in a little bit of a spinal twist, so make sure you come up tall, then gently turn back to center. Let's move the props out of the way. Help the right knee again bend. Come to just a simple seated pose. If you need to kind of readjust on the sit bones, you may do that. And then hands can walk out in front of you. And just drop the heart for couple of breath here and an easy seated forward fold.
come back up and we'll do the other side. So right leg will stay in, left leg extends out, <clears throat> bringing the sole of the foot to the inner thigh. Again, if this right knee is lifted, block or something underneath to support it. Same options as before, you can be center or forward in the fold, or you can turn off the left leg and take the little bit of a spinal twist to fold. Okay, so whatever position you want to get set up in, go ahead and move into that. Time is starting now. Again, I'll let you know when we're at halfway so that if you want to switch up your position, you can. Make sure you're checking in with that right hip and glute as well, relaxing it as much as possible. And we're at a point in our class now where we can check back in with the breath and see if you can breathe more air in, if you can breathe deeper and extend the time of your inhales and exhales. So if you are breathing in for six on each breath, can you extend it to eight or ten? So we are about halfway through our time, through our hold here. So if you want to switch it up, if you go, go a little bit deeper in the position that you're in, if you want to go forward or switch over to the leg, again, if you're moving at all, do so very slowly and gently with yourself. Relax your eyebrows and your jaw. stretch of time here.
take five more breaths. Start to walk your hands back, sitting yourself up. Again, if you ended over the leg, you're in a little bit of a spinal twist, so come back to center slowly. Move your props out of the way. Help your left knee bend. Come back to an easy seated pose. And then again, hands can walk down and forward. Dropping into an easy seated forward fold. And this time, since we've done both sides, it might feel good to sway the shoulders and kind of rock on the sit bones and the hips a little bit. And then sit yourself back up. All right, we're gonna get down on our backs now. We'll be there for the remainder of our class. If you've got pillows, bolster, or blankets that you would like to set underneath your back, you can have that going the long way down your mat. And however close you need to pull the bolster or the blankets into the body, that's up to you. So if it's really, really close to the lower back, this might put too much of an arc in the lumbar spine. So if you need to instead have the bolster or the pillows up the back more, maybe starting the bottom or rather the top of the lumbar spine then you could be resting here, arms open wide. This is not needed. You can have it out of the way and just be lying flat on your back. We're gonna go into a supine tree. So we're gonna start with the left leg extended out. We're gonna have the right knee bent and the foot to the inner thigh, kind of like what we've been doing already, but now we're in a forward plane versus a side. Same as before, if this right knee is lifted, you can place something underneath to support it. And then if this bothers the knee joint, so the higher up that the foot is on the left leg, the more closed that the knee is gonna be. That may be irritating to some of us. You can have the foot down towards the knee or the calf or even the ankle. Just take the bend out. We're looking for that external rotation here in the hip, okay? So. Place your foot, support the knee if you need to, support the back if you would like to, and lying down, time is starting. If you are supporting your back, again, the more that you open and stretch through the fingertips, the more that you'll feel across the front of the heart and chest. Nice deep breath here, maybe deeper than what you've been breathing as the body settles, as your nervous system goes back into the rest and digest response. It may just be natural or easier to take a deeper breath in. That's great. That's what we're looking for. <laughs>
take two more breaths. Then extend through the right leg. You can pedal out the knees, turn the feet from side to side and just release that right leg and hip. And then we'll go into the other side. So the right leg will st stay extended Left knee buttons, bringing the foot to the upper inner thigh, down the knee, down to the calf. Again, whatever feels good on your knee joint. If you need to, support that left knee with a block. Okay, supine tree on the second side. Time has started. Soften into it. a little bit longer here, a couple more breaths. If you need to extend your left leg again to release the knee, to bring the leg, the hip back into a more balanced feeling, you can. Otherwise, from here, we're going to bend the right knee again. Now bring the soles of the feet together. So we're in a supine Baddha Konasana. Soles of the feet touching, knees are open. Again, this is where... It might be nice to have the blocks underneath the legs if they're lifted, if it, if it feels like the hips are straining. And then the closer the feet are to the body, the more that you'll feel this. So you can press or move the feet away so that you have more of a diamond shape versus a triangle in the legs. So not too long here. If you've got something underneath your back and the spine has kind of had enough, you can move that out of the way as well. Otherwise, stay supported here. This will be our final shape with the external rotation in the hips. We'll end with an internal rotation and then Shavasana. So we will leave feeling very balanced in the hips and the lower body.
take five more breath here. Once I do that, I like to lift my sit bones up and tuck my tailbone so that my lower back feels like it's long again instead of kind of crunchy. <laughs> then you'll widen your feet, stepping the feet out to the edges of the mat, and then drop the knees together for knock knees. And this is just our gentle internal rotation for the hips to help bring us into balance. And if you have something underneath your spine and you want to move it out of the way, you can to come lay down flat <laughs> or stay supported, totally up to you. You are able to try to breathe the deepest at this time now. Relax your eyebrows and your jaw. And let that feeling of softness travel down the neck and shoulders. into Shavasana, you may extend through the legs. If you are really enjoying that knock knee position, then you can stay there. Otherwise, legs extended, arms open out wide. Dropping into your Shavasana pose. Really just trying to get as heavy as possible. You can release the breathing technique of that equal in and out and just go back to your natural breath.
know if you have time to stay longer, please feel free to do so. Or if you're practicing in the evening and you want to roll yourself into bed and just go to sleep now, that'll be nice. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap up class so you can reach through the arms and the legs for an elongation stretch. And then soften your body. Bend your knees, hugging them into your heart. You can gently roll over to your right side, pausing there for a breath. And then bring yourself up back to an easy seated pose. Hands meet prayer in front of your heart. Crown lifts you nice and tall. Take a moment of gratitude for your body, your breath, and this practice. And then if you set an intention, you can repeat that to yourself. Bow your brain, sealing everything in. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me on your mat today. I hope that you enjoyed that restorative practice. I hope you get some good sleep after. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.